So Hasbro introduced G.I. Joe all the way back in 1964. It's a 12 inch tall action figure that co-opted the Barbie sales model, which is to say, sell the base figure and then tons of modular accessories and outfits. Where Barbie was fashion, G.I. Joe was strictly militaria, with outfits and accessories based on real world infantry units and specialties that we would see in World War II and the Korean War. However, by the early 70s, Hasbro started shifting its focus away from the military aspect. This is due in large part to the war in Vietnam, a military action that we could charitably call a shitstorm. While still pretty polarizing, by the early 70s, the Vietnam War was massively unpopular with the general populace. It was seen as a quagmire, an unjustified military action, and Hasbro knew to get out when the getting was good. So Joe left active duty, grew out his hair, grew out a beard, learned some kung fu, and became an adventurer, a member of the illustrious Adventure Team. The Adventure Team is maligned by a lot of G.I. Joe fans, especially those who focus on the military aspect, but honestly, I'm here for Pulp Adventure good times, and that's exactly what the Adventure Team is. The marketing shifted from selling military outfits and specialty gear to, well, adventures. The accessory packs would now be focused on jungle adventures, desert adventures, searches for lost artifacts, what have you. And we're going to look at two of the most popular ones right now. Secret of the Mummy's Tomb takes us to the Giza Plateau, and Joe is ready for some archaeological adventure in the shifting sands of the desert. Taking a quick look with the 64 Joe and the Adventure Team Joe side by side, you can see that they are still the same figure at the base, the same engineering, the same sculpt work, but the head has changed, with Joe now having lifelike beard and hair. He's ready for some adventure, because he's got his adventure khakis on, a khaki shirt, khaki pants, and a pith helmet. To max out his stats and grave rob, I mean, archaeology, Joe can dual wield the shovel, and pickaxe, which are included in the set. Joe's biggest accessory, however, is the ATV. And if you think ATV stands for all-terrain vehicle, you're wrong. It stands for adventure team vehicle. It's bright ass, bright yellow with six wheels and a winch on the back. It seats one Joe and has some space for some accessories. And if you think this is goofy looking, well, you're right, but it is based off of a very real, still goofy looking vehicle. What about those ancient Egyptian secrets, though? Well, Joe can excavate this sarcophagus. It's very well detailed and even has a paint wash to it. It's cast in a seafoam green plastic, which, while a little odd, is not completely unfounded, as ancient Egyptian Ushati have a very similar color palette. The top of the sarcophagus can be slid out to reveal a mummy, as well as some jewels. This is all really cool and really fun, but there's one issue. Once Joe excavates this, we can see that it's really tiny. It's about six inch scale, so it doesn't fit with Joe, but I guess if you got Marvel Legends, it can hang out with them. This leads into the major play feature. See, you get a net with the ATV. Lay it down, throw the sarcophagus in like a sack of potatoes, and then hook it up, and you can use the winch to carry it into the ATV. You still gotta put the mummy in the ATV, and you know, he really can't do anything besides ride shotgun. Overall, I'd say this is a pretty solid adventure. Joe got some jewels, he made a new friend who may or may not be cursed, he got out of Egypt a okay, successful all around. We continue on with G.I. Joe's bizarre adventure with the White Tiger Hunt. Much like Simon Le Bon of Duran Duran, Joe finds himself in the hot and humid jungle in pursuit of the fast and dangerous... Uh, hold on, let me check my notes here. White Tiger. In this dangerous mission, Joe has dressed accordingly, with an Australian Outback-style hat, a green jacket, and, of course, his adventurer's khakis. The green jacket's pretty cool, because it does include the Adventure Team logo, as well as these bullets sewn on, which is a really nice detail. It's going to be an overnight hunt, so Joe includes a tent, which is extremely industrious. You would never see this in modern-day toy engineering. It's a cloth tent with a metal frame and supports. It's really well made and very well executed. And to make things extra cozy, he includes a little fireplace. Pretty nice. Good. Oh, sweet Jesus. While Joe was singing his campfire songs, he was attacked by the white tiger. Oh, good lord, that's a tiny tiger. 
The white tiger is extremely cute and super adorable, and it's pretty well painted for the time. This guy's actually so cute and so adorable that Joe can actually hold him like a house cat. I guess if he gets a little too vicious, you can always put him in the cage, but why would you want to do that? That guy needs to hang out to camp. Well, Joe goes on some weird adventures, but that's A-OK. -okay. He gets to share them with his friends. Look, the military aspect is undeniably integral to G.I. Joe. I mean, the dude's named G.I. Joe, and it resonates through the 60s, the 70s, and even the 80s of Real American Hero era. But there's an undeniable fun and bold quality to the adventure team. It's all about daring journeys to discover new artifacts, uncover mysteries, and just generally be a charismatic and charming era of the G.I. Joe franchise. Thank <laughs> you. 